Hello everyone, welcome back to 20 Side Adventures. Uh, my apologies for not getting some videos out this week. I went to make my first Pathfinder 2 game in Roll20 and start setting up my table and getting everything uh, rolling like I'm used to in, in that platform and found out that the, uh, the level of support tools and resources available to run a Pathfinder 2 game are abysmally lacking. Um, I loved using Roll20 for Pathfinder 1, macros, tools, APIs, all of it was fantastic, and none of it seems to be there for me for Pathfinder 2. So I started looking around and trying to see where Pathfinder 2 games were being played, and everything kept saying Foundry. And so, this is why I'm switching from Roll20 to Foundry. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Foundry is uh, a self-hosted role-playing uh, virtual tabletop system that you purchase a license key for and pretty much have access to everything that's available out there. Um, you can self-host if you have some really good internet or there are some hosting services very similar to like running your own private server for ARC or... Um, Life is Feudal or any of those survival games, or really any game you'd want to you want to host on your own. And the costs pretty much work out very similar to how Roll20 did for their premium subscription, and you get just so many more tools. So this is their website. There's a fantastic demo here you can roll right into, which oddly enough is running their Pathfinder 2 system uh, as, as a hint that this platform is fantastic for Pathfinder 2. Uh, but one of the biggest things I wanted to highlight that this has um where am i going here we want their modules so while i dabbled with some modules in roll 20 and macros and building some things the amount of user support that is out there uh, from the community is staggering so 1908 add-on modules now obviously these are not all going to work for your particular tabletop game but there is a wealth of tools out there and i'll show you a couple of the early on ones that i'm really enjoying and i'll probably do a video uh, later on that's a little more in depth so uh, most importantly the amount of tools and support for Pathfinder 2 is the primary reason for why I'm switching. Uh, having made the switch and now spent the whole last week poking and dabbling and trying to figure out how to use this system, um, I can say I can't believe I've been using Roll20 for this long. Foundry has so much more uh, as a DM and things that I can bring to my table. I'm converting over my Pathfinder 1 game as soon as my Pathfinder 2 game set up. I am just so freaking excited to use everything that's available in this system to take that virtual tabletop gaming experience to the next level. So I'll just kind of show you what I've got started right out the gate. So this is my landing page. If you've seen my other video on virtual tabletop, this is what uh, the home screen is going to look like for my Pathfinder 2 game, which is Trouble in Wolfsfelden, which is a region of my holy empire that's kind of on the... Uh, the edge of society. It's a border frontier kind of place. And the adventurers are all going to be uh, based around this tavern and a hunter's guild that's there. And they're going to have to solve problems in the countryside and deal with cults and monsters and uh, very generic gen adventuring kind of stuff. So I'm kind of get used to it. But uh, so I'm going to have character portraits, the graveyard, all that kind of good stuff. But uh, for my calendar, there is a tool where I can custom create the calendar for my world. It keeps track of moon cycles. Uh, I can advance time based on the time of day. Foundry keeps track. So like if I unpause the game here, and there we go, time ticks in real time. So those 10 minutes, uh, a level buffs and whatnot, and we're never quite sure. Have they run out? Is it run out yet? Maybe, maybe not. Well this system keeps track of real time. And so when we go into combat, it even keeps track of six second rounds to, to manage all of those kind of buffs. Um, that is just a fantastic quality of life tool that comes native without a mod. So simple calendar is the mod for this one. And as you can see here, like if I jump over to this, we have the moon cycle. Uh, if there's any important dates, holidays, if I put them in there that come up, players can put notes in here on particular dates that are important to them. Um, 
just one of my favorite tools right out the gate. Um, <clears throat> I will say on the tokens, there's a lot more options as well. So when we actually uh, assign a status effect, so in roll 20, when I, you know, oh, someone's been, uh, let's see, blinded, and I'd put my blinded token on, it wouldn't change anything, folks would have to go in and adjust things. Well, this system with the Pathfinder 2 rule set automatically applies blinded to the bartender's sheet here, as well as being on the token. So I find just those smaller quality of life things to keep everything rolling um, are just fantastic. Uh, there we go. No longer blinded. Um, so that's one of my favorite little things. A quick double click on the token. The sheet comes up. Everything moves faster and smoother than I'm accustomed to in Roll20. Um, if I was still uh, in the city on my high-speed fiber optic internet that I do miss, I would probably self-host. Uh, right now I'm on Starlink out in the country, so no options for self-hosting, but still it's faster, more responsive. Things are crisp and smooth, where I find Roll20 lags, bogs down, slows really my whole computer down, and I just don't experience any of that with Foundry. It's just been, uh, been fantastic. Uh, the NPC sheets are faster to operate, quicker to fill in. Um, it's been, been a real pleasure just setting that up. Uh, the other probably favorite, um, feature I have from a mod add-on, you might notice over here in the right, the World Anvil logo. I can click this and it will load up my World Anvil selections. At least it should. Let's see. Where is it going? There it goes. Here is everything from my World Anvil. And I can put any of these articles directly into the journal. So in Roll20, I'd have to put a link, click this, go here. But now when the players want to learn about the city that they're in, they just click it. And here is everything from my World Anvil articles concerning the city. So we have the city district maps. We have settlement level, items that are available. You can re scroll through here, all of the nuanced things, demographics, defenses, local guilds, the infrastructure, local industry, um, all the different district descriptions are all just right here in their journal, in the game. They don't have to click anywhere else. I don't have to write it twice. It just gets pulled right into my game. Uh, as an avid user of World Anvil, this, if no other features were present, would make uh, Foundry an easy switch for me, hands down. Um, you can just kind of kind of go through a quick list of my mods that I have done and what I've been appealed to them. Uh, advanced macros just helps build some macros. Ambient doors fills in side sound effects for the doors that are being opened. Automated animations, so spells, attacks, uh, all the actions of the characters have animations you can quickly uh, put in. Chat portrait, so when someone talks, their their image shows up in the chat window. Dice so nice. So oddly enough. Foundry doesn't have any dice rolling, uh, so it has a mod that you put in for the dice, and frankly, it's so much better than it was in uh, in Roll20. Why am I not rolling? Oh, because I'm in this thing here. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let's see. Drag to upload, a default that I'm used to in Roll20. Foundry, you had to go through uh, and you know, find folders and click what you wanted. With this mod, I can just drag things onto, uh, onto my screen, and it uploads, very similar to what I'm used to in Roll20. Uh, force client settings. So when folks are having problems with their settings, rather than trying to coach them through it in Roll20, I can just force the settings for everyone logging into my game and everything will work the way it's supposed to. Uh, mount up. This was something we had in Roll20 also. It clicks a token to their mount so they move together. Um, FX Masters, just uh, an add-on to some of those uh, AV... Uh, mods I mentioned earlier. Health estimates, a fun one. It shows an estimate of where tokens health are at. So when they mouse over and inspect the enemy, they can get an idea of how healthy they are. More animations, uh, some supporting ones. Loot sheet NPC. So this is a cool tool where it's going to let me set up. Not only can you just loot the dead for what's on their sheet, but I can set up merchants and shops. So in this particular setting of Wolfsfelden, where they're going to be around town most of the time, um, I'm going to have a teleport option so they can drag their tokens from the home screen. It'll teleport them to another page. And on that page, they'll be able to interact with the sheets that are set up as merchants. And it will deduct 
what is being bought from their, their inventory of gold and add to their sheet what they're purchasing all automated to speed up that shopping process for the basics and keeping anyone looking for something really unique uh, to a more role-playing uh, activity. Uh, more UI for the dice is nice. Multi-level tokens, so that's what lets me teleport people around maps. Uh, Path Muncher is a fantastic one that I found. It lets uh, us import information from Path Builder, which is a great tool for building characters in Pathfinder 2. I'll be demoing that here when I do my character creation videos. Pause Customizer, so I could get the channel logo as my pause spinning icon. Um, what else here? Uh, Monster Maker, Keybind Menagerie, so you can just do hotkeys for different uh, effects on your tokens without having to click them. Ranged Combat, it keeps track of reloads and automatically assigns the times to them when you need to reload your weapons, so you don't have to figure all that stuff out. It's just automated if you're a ranged character. Uh, Polyglot, I'm really hoping this one works out really cool, but we'll see. Uh, it sounds awesome, and I'm looking forward to using it in the game, but when using the chat interface, you can choose to type in a specific language that your character knows and only other characters in the party or i suppose if you had a, a table set up or maybe you had players that were confrontational but uh, only the people in the chat that know the same language will be able to read what you type everyone else will just see a garbly gook of uh, letters and text uh, quick scale is just a quality of life thing to uh, size uh, tiles and tokens up. Tiles is a term in Foundry, not familiar to Roll20, but it's uh, any item you put on your map that isn't a token, um, which everything could be a token in Roll20. They are specifically divided up in Foundry for those of you thinking of switching over. Uh, simple calendar, that was the one I just put out there. Smart target. Um, there is an auto damage applying aspect to Foundry, so this helps with targeting. The creature on the board of your attack or your spell and just setting all of that up um let's see i've quite honestly forgotten what time's up is uh token auras so it gives you more detailed auras for ca uh, characters that have aura abilities uh weather and weather blocker so you can add weather overlays to your page um so you can have rain snow fog smoke and it's it's just really cool um the weather blocker lets you so if they go inside of a building on a map maybe where you have a structure and then the outside the rain stops when they're inside so these are some of the mods that i found i'm still going through the 1900 mods to see what other cool things there are asking people for advice on different uh different features that are out there but uh the quality of life the ease of, of setup um, were fantastic. The nuts and bolts, there's a lot of real obvious things that I'm, I'm missing, and there's a lot more in-depth to set things up. Um, so like setting up a token, uh, the identity of the token, the appearance, the vision, the light, the resources, the auras, the health estimator. So like there is 15 more things I can set up on a token than I could in Roll20, which can be a little daunting at first, uh, but is is just fantastic. So vision, uh, vision mode, basic vision, dark vision, monochromatic vision, tremor sense. Yeah, they can have tremor sense in this interface on a virtual tabletop. I did a subterranean game with dwarves last my last campaign, and tremor sense was such a pain in the ass to figure out for my players that had it. And just the fact that they could get little pings whenever a token was moving outside of their vision and through walls from their tremor sense would have been freaking fantastic. Um, also, and this worked in Roll20, but uh, you don't have to have a higher subscription for it here. Once you own uh, the license, you can just do it. Uploading from Dungeon Alchemist, all of the lights, the walls, and the doors are all inputted and work correctly from when you build the map in Dungeon Alchemist and put it into Foundry. So... Um, for example, let's uh, let's go over to that one. Man, I'm still not good at finding where everything is at yet. Encounters, man. Last one, I suppose, right? Oh, no, that's not encounters. See? I'm, scenes. This is what I wanted. Anyways, so we can go over here. And this is from Dungeon Alchemist. 
Uh, I have the GM level, so I get to see everything, but uh, all the doors work. I didn't have to input any of this. It all just came in from Dungeon Alchemist. So um, can't speak highly enough about it. I'm still learning it. It's a, it's a fairly steep learning curve, especially when you're used to where some things are at in Roll20. But everything I've found in that I did in Roll20, I can do here. And then a half a dozen more things that are better, smoother, and more efficient. So quite frankly, I encourage you to check out Foundry if you haven't yet and to... Uh, to have a look and see if it'll be good for your table. Hey buddy, my uh, my dog Achilles here is making a cameo appearance. Wanted over for some pets. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry I haven't gotten much out there. I'm really engrossed in trying to learn this system and get it set up for my players and uh, to be able to bring you more videos about it and how to create a better uh, virtual tabletop gaming experience for you and your players through Foundry and uh, yeah. Looking forward to getting this Pathfinder 2 game, our first session Saturday coming up. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this and look forward to having some more videos out for you soon. See you guys later and uh, look forward to more 20-side adventures with you.